What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at Russo Lifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. What is up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Here with my coach Alec Matrivsky at Alec Matrivsky on Instagram. And we are going to be clapping back at the comments section. So me and Alec have been chirping everyone on the podcast, so be sure to follow Blunt Biohacking Podcast. We are going to shoot another episode tomorrow, but I wanted to go into why Alec has me stacking nandrolone phenylpropionate MPP, or you could use DECA, whichever one, with equipoise. You know, I read the comments, people are mad that I'm not doing a gram of test with my MPP. And people are mad that I'm stacking EQ with MPP, which on paper are two of the most horrible steroids on the heart. And that's not synergistic in everyone's mind. I've honestly had the opposite impact on my blood pressure. So I'm going to bring on my blood pressure tracking here, which I am going to get more accurate as I go on. I've been kind of lazy with it, but I did have a good track on it. So you can see that my blood pressure started out 146 over 91, and it was a little bit higher before I started tracking it. That was with the NPP only, right? I put in an order for EQ and I was waiting for the EQ to come in. And now you can see that I'm down to 227.4 pounds in the morning after a shit so this is my one of my lowest weigh-ins so far with my only other one being 227.2. And as you can see, my blood pressure is 131 over 76 going down since starting at like 150 over 90 something. So Alec, why is this synergy between EQ and MPP helping me out in this blood pressure? So the number one problem with uh, problem with androgens and, and blood pressure is sheer activation of the raw system, the renin adjutants and aldosterone. And that's basically uh, directly correlated with water tension. So we know that nandrolone is fairly water intensive, so it has a great impact on the raw system. And boldenone, on the other hand, both because of its anti-estrogenic properties, but also independently of that, it reduces water tension in the body and it hardens up the physique, which you see obviously in both in your right. in your appearance. And I was like real watery, natural looking, high exactly. blood pressure, yeah. like mentally I could feel that pressure, that blood pressure is making me uneasy. Added in yeah. the EQ. And if you check my current Instagram updates, it's like night and day. And I realistically, only lost like six pounds so I mean, people have night and day different yeah people have been commenting on you know how you look basically just you know looking at your your face even right you know, so they're commenting on you know have, they, they've been doing that over for a while now so that's hugely just m mitigating water tension so that's why you know bolden on an androne uh, they go hand in hand greatly together that's a big reason why i didn't you know, have your testosterone high because if you had like high testosterone, your estrogen would have been sky high. And also in conjunction with the nandrolone, since it's a progestin, it would have, you know, both impacted prolactin and caused a plethora of side effects and very bad, you know, of water retention. I would and, get decadent for everyone. I'd have right. to fucking take an anti-prolactin B6. I'd be having sex all of a sudden go soft if we had that testosterone at a gram. Not to mention, you know, the blood pressure, the DHT, yeah. acne, the extra hair loss, everything in between. Exactly. So it's funny I, how these old school methods are just like, they won't go away. You know, it's like they all honestly just want to see a gram of testosterone with this Decker MPP or Alec doesn't even know what he's talking about, even though he's pointing out medically why he's making the decisions he's making. It's funny you mentioned old school because there is nothing more old school than Nandrolone Solo. Back in the 80s and 90s, they used Nandrolone, you know, most often even as a base, you know, even in the pharmacies, you could, you know, get uh, the Norma Nandrolone and ampules. And that was used as far as steroid goes uh, in conjunction with uh, by Primabolan. So the greatest physics, you know, Arnold on during the Arnold's era were, you know, built on Deca, Primo, and some Debol. They didn't use the Sashon, you know know much at all or if anything if any at all during those times. And if you if, if you can see, you know, they all have great hair, you know, clear skins and you know, lack of androgenic side effects. So that's a big deal. And you know, be, judging also by your blood pressure readings. So you went from stage two hypertension, which is above 140 over uh 90. 
and upwards, you're right now in stage one hypertension, which is like from 130 to 139 over 80 to 89, which, uh, I mean, it's not bad. And I, I think it's just going to go down. So I wouldn't, you know, put you on an ARP right now. Otherwise, that would be the first line of uh, therapy, like implementing uh, like 40 milligrams of telmosartan. But that's not needed right now. And I, I, I'm assuming it's going to go down even further. So, you know, why, why bother implementing something we don't need? I mean, like... People really mad over it. Like, why do you think? Let's just, just segue a little bit. Why are people still like when you read online? It's like 500 milligrams of testosterone is a small dose of testosterone. If you want to be big, you know, you might as well just do a gram of testosterone and then add your androgen on top. The problem I mean, is that p- people are following cult like you know philosophies. They they read something and they just solely get that into their heart and anything deviating from that is basically blasphemy. So that's the problem. You know, people are getting very emotionally driven about things as stupid as, you know, cycling ideas. So that's a problem, you know, and if you go against that, you know, they're quick to jump the gun and, you know, even write, you know, nasty shit in the comments and, you know, things like that. And just uh, not, not just about, you know, this, you know, it's regarding challenging any anything, you know, anything that's deviating from you know the general perspective or even just theirs you know they can be just bluntly wrong and be you know uh just the only idiot for example that thinks something you know has a theory about something and if you challenge that you know you're you're basically their enemy so uh, just how it is i guess let's go into a caveat let's say you're guruing like a genetic freak like i know you're doing me classic physique i'm gonna have a 193 stage weight let's say you're doing like a super heavy weight how are you doing their testosterone if you're competing a competitive ifbb super heavyweight are you then dipping into the higher dosages of testosterone or are you still doing a methodology of like testosterone is the base androgen testosterone is kind of a dirty compound you might as well just have that as the base at a low dosage and build the cycle or are you just starting them off on a higher dose of testosterone no the the philosophy stays the same because those are the scientific facts so it it comes down to individual pharmacodynamics you know some people respond poorly to certain things so for example if if there's a bulking in a bulking situation like i'd like to see an angel on being pushed uh like as high as it can get in regards to you know dosing wise but relative to side effects like if you're getting you know being hypertensive and having like uh, problems in in other aspects then, you know, I would pull back. But milligram per milligram, nandrolone is way more anabolic than testosterone. And why would you administrate something that's, you know, less anabolic in higher doses and more endogenic and just going to give you side effects? Right. So, so As and also the cliche of- saying goes, there's only so much room in the syringe. You want the right. most powerful fucking androgen in there that's the most selective or the most, yeah. you know, correlated to actually doing what you want to do. Exactly. So, like androgens are great in in two situations one is where you're you want to dry out like pre-contest because they do have effect you know visual effect in regards to promoting vascularity hardness that's also mediated partly through blood pressure increase but like you if you're looking for that androgenic look then in those situations you know driving tremble on mash on things like that you know pre-show that's fine and also in a context of, of uh, strength based training you know if you're powerlifting I get that you know you wouldn't gain much strength on DECA versus you know high doses of the session so it doesn't matter what you you're looking to gain out of it and that's how you strategize and 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 adjust accordingly what is another thing that you think is misunderstood with like the most common cycles like for someone starting out like what would be a good rule of thumb who can't afford even though you're cheap right everyone go blow up alex ig until he's going to stop doing dms I know it's already getting crazy for him, but like, what's a good like methodology that like the most simplest, simple minded person can take in their enhanced journey that can't afford oversight? So in general, like, first of all, starting off, uh, I always, I would recommend going with the session because it's bioidentical and it's predictable. You know, you don't have to worry about, you know, other paths pathways and you know some signature things in regards to you know dopamine levels and in the brain function that the nandrolones can cause you know so if you're starting off you know you can go ahead and you know dip into you know testosterone usage but later on like as you find out that you're inevitably going to 
going to get side effects at certain point, then that's where you want to reconsider your approach and go with low testosterone, maybe TRT, in a TRT settings, you know, 200 to 50 max, and then adding, you know, either uh, nandrolone or boldenone or even both in various ratios and find out for yourself based on through blood work and through just subjective how you feel, uh, both performance wise and how you look and how you feel and overall gauge you know which ratio of those drugs you want to be on so uh, that's pretty much it and also i would avoid you know and the estrogens those are great as far as quick fix goes you know if your shit goes bad if you have like uh, acute spikes in estrogen and you, and you want to get out of those situations or guy know you know shoots up then you know utilizing them and having them on hand is is crucial but do not rely on them uh, and also do not rely on chronic use of them because they will give you side effects they will skewer cholesterol they will lower bone mineral density and overall they can cause a plethora of problems that you don't want so the less drugs that you're dependent on the better um so and also you you need less of those if you're lowering your overall overall aromatizing drugs so uh, again that circles back to utilizing less testosterone and op opting for you know other steroids awesome well i hope you guys learned something if you guys are new here hit the subscribe button and then go to notifications and hit all otherwise you won't see when me and alec upload and be sure to check out blunt biohacking we will be releasing a new podcast every week and as you can see alec got the new microphone and we are going to be upgrading the podcast quality completely i will not be using zoom at all i will be giving you guys much better audio to listen to and then once that's happening i will be releasing the podcast onto spotify and apple Podcasts for you guys to listen to in the car i hope to see you guys in my next video